Hey, remember Jonathan Crone? Jonathan Crone was this little kid who was 13 years old when he spoke at CPAC and he gave this, what a lot of people <laughs> consider to be kind of a chilling speech about conservatism and really freaked a lot of people out. If you don't remember it, he wrote this book, Defining Conservatism. This is a little bit of an excerpt of that speech, which should bring back some memories, good or bad, for different people. Minutes, so I better make it quick. Uh, in the book, I decided. First of all, let me start why I decided to write this book. Uh, during the election, I noticed that there were so many people throwing around the word conservative and liberal and socialism, and um, so I decided that there were too many people who threw this the term conservative around who didn't understand what they were talking about. Right. Uh, they, they didn't understand what conservatism was. They didn't understand conservatism as a base of principle, but they understood it I'm as a base nauseous. of policy. I'm uh, going to stop it because it, was, it is a little bit nauseating, but that's the guy. Well, we've caught up with him again. In wait, fact, hold on. Okay, let, let's just, we need to say something about this. It's just very, very depressing when you see a kid already at such a young age replicating the exact mannerisms and talking points of his superiors in the Republican Party. And you can just tell this guy, he's going to be, he's already almost the most annoying conservative. Imagine in 20 years. Right. Well, it turns out now that he's 17, 17 years old, it's been uh, close to four years, about four years. It now turns out he's become a liberal, even though he won't call himself that. Here's what he says. He says, I think the speech was naive. It's a 13 year old kid saying stuff he had heard for a long time. As Natan says, we're inundated with conservative talk in Georgia. The speech was something a 13 year old does. I've never seen another 13 year old do that, but apparently in Georgia, maybe that's what you do. You haven't formed all your opinions. You're really defeating yourself. If you think that you have all your ideas in your head when you're 12 or 13, it's impossible. You haven't done enough. So he won't say he's liberal now, Lewis, but he's in favor of gay marriage. He says Obamacare is a good idea. He says he would probably vote for Barack Obama if he were 18. His favorite TV shows are The Daily Show and The Colbert Report. And his favorite magazine is The New Yorker. He's also going to NYU, not exactly a bastion of conservative education. No. It's, it's funny. I mean, let's be honest. When you're 17, you also don't have the world figured out either. But what's interesting is that there is this misnomer, I think, that as you age, you become more conservative. Now, this is only an anecdotal example of something else, but I actually reject that idea altogether. What happens is when you do a poll on political issues based on age, people who are older at that time are more conservative. But that's because of cultural changes. So as time goes, those people are going to be uh, dying off, for, 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 to put it bluntly. And then the oldest people will probably still be the most conservative, but they will be far less conservative than today's oldest generation. Do you think I'm onto something there? That seems perfectly valid, yeah. What do you think, Natan? I just, I don't think this is an example. I agree with what you're saying. I just don't think this is an example of that. I think the, what's heartening about this is that as this intelligent kid, even though he was saying crazy things, he was clearly intelligent and precocious, as he matured, he adopted a more open-minded and liberal position. Critical thinking. You exactly. know what happens when you start thinking critically? The liberals indoctrinate you. Oh, I mean, you figure out for yourself what the right way to, of, uh, of, of seeing the world is. He's only just starting to attend college, mind you. Yeah, he hasn't started yet. Let's keep um, that in mind. So, I mean, there's one more quote here from him. It says, the issues are so complex. You can't just go with some ideological mantra for each substantive issue. Yeah, I mean, it's, And that uh, pretty much summarizes the whole thing. It really does. Yeah. It really does. The show doesn't end when the show ends. There's a whole other bonus show available to our David Pakman Show members. Lewis hosts it. Today we're talking about a massive marijuana site in San Diego that was found. I'm actually going to do the numbers. We actually taped the bonus show already today because I've got to get out of here after the show. And I actually did the math. This is some of my chicken scratch. And I actually am going to show you why the war on drugs makes no sense by dollar for dollar, Lewis. Million dollar by million dollar, I guess, is, is the right way to say Correct. it. Correct. We'll also talk about a new nicotine vaccine, and we'll talk about some plane hijackers that were beaten to death. DavidPakman.com slash membership. Pennies a day. Support independent media. Sign up. We'll be back after this. The David Pakman Show at DavidPakman.com.